Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. August 2nd, 2023. Just about 20 minutes to the cash close here on this Wednesday afternoon. Spoos, they're rocking right now. Down just about 69 handles. Look, a critical confluence of market volatility is upon us. I'm going to explain in this evening's video precisely what I see in just the days to come. Again, how critical these next few hours of the marketplace really are. Let's get to work here again on this evening's video. As we were saying, the S&P futures, yeah, they're facing almost a 70 handle loss. But time out for a second. You know, at times like this where you, you know, you just haven't seen the S&Ps move 70 handles except to the upside lately, but you just haven't seen a 70 handle move to the downside in quite some time. Perspective people it's only, okay, a 1.5% move. And I say only, that isn't even close to statistically significant. Now, as I talk about, you know, this critical confluence of, of volatility events that are going to unfold, that statement is neither bullish nor bearish. At least it's not intended to be. It's just, again, there's a confluence of events that is about to occur that could, again, ex just explode volatility in the marketplace. And I'm going to take you through kind of step by step what I really see coming. As I said, like, you know, a couple of hours away from this, and when it comes down to it, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Apple and Amazon, the jobs number effectively coming out. There's a whole lot of risk in this marketplace directly ahead of us. All right. So, Again, just a little perspective here. We're not even a statistically significant move inside of the S&Ps. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ, all right, I'll give you this. The NASDAQ's taken it out on the chin a little bit. You know, a 2.3% move, though, is still not statistically significant. For those of you that don't know the significance, if you will, okay, approximately a 3% move. A 3% move inside, okay, of a major index product is what most traders would actually term of some degree of significance. Now, of course, we're all going to point out well, the volatility had popped and it popped by the tune of almost 20%. Again, neither here nor there. Because when it comes down to it, it's still not that significant of a move. And I'm actually going to give you something right up front that I don't think enough people are paying attention to. And this is, categorically speaking, one of the most critical things to be looking for in the days to come. I'm going to jump right to it. Take a look at the advanced decline line. For those of you that uh, look at this day to day with me, one of the factors okay, that is not okay, clean in today's sell side activity, we are nowhere near, again, nowhere near high degrees of correlation. So when you look at this and you think to yourself, sell side activity, the volatility's back and people are high-fiving one another, yeah, forget that tune, okay? Forget it, and why? We're not actually hitting, again, any degrees of correlation. And I've talked about this just it's incessantly on some of the evening videos. On a day like today, you should really wanna see like 90, okay? 93 stocks trading to the downside. We're nowhere there. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can read into that. You can read into that and think to yourself, <laughs> there's 27 other things that we could sell into, okay? The other thing is when we do hit higher degrees of correlation, okay? It could be, you know, an effort to get to capitulation, okay? Evidently, we're simply nowhere near that at this point in time. Again, that high correlation, in my opinion, is critical. Okay, if markets are going to stage a much more significant down move. And as I said, we're just not there yet. And that's it's okay, you know, for those of you that are high five and one another though about some of the volatility today. So volatility makes a little bit of a move, you know. All right, I got it. But it's right in front of us that matters. Like, look, the move today, it's hindsight. It's over. By the time you actually listen to this, literally, it is over. Okay, but you want to pay attention and very careful attention to the advanced decline line of the days to come, not like advancers over decliners. You just glance at this and say like, hey, look, he's right. There's 95 stocks trading to the downside tomorrow morning. The volatility kicks in hard. Then you're going to have a VIX just erupt. Okay, backing up for just a moment. So 
if you just tune in, you look at the S&Ps and they're down a little bit. Okay. Everybody points fingers and they go, the Fitch downgrade did this. Okay. Did the Fitch downgrade really do it? Look, we were looking for any exogenous event that was actually going to, what I term, light the fuse. So the Fitch okay, lit the fuse. That's really what it comes down to. The Fitch downgrade of U.S. debt lit the fuse. Speaking of U.S. debt, okay, bonds, they got rocked early on, recovered, flatlined. And this is also fairly critical, okay? It's trade is incredibly indecisive inside of some of the bond market. Moreover, if you take a look at the notes, I mean, the notes were eh, almost unchanged today. Like it left so much to be desired in terms of the momentum of this. Meanwhile, if we take a look at the interest rate associated with this, this is the TNX, the 10 year. The 10 year actually cracked, okay? A very critical level here and then pulled back right below it. This is going to be something to watch. So as I was saying, to begin with, there's this critical confluence of market volatility is upon us. Let's actually detail each area of this, okay? Number one to me, okay, is right here inside of the TNX. Meaning that if you're taking a look at the TNX, you see this level of about 41, that means about 4.1%. Uh, if we start to take off mildly, okay, above that, we may actually just explode, okay, above it. That would spark some fairly incredible volatility back to the S&Ps. So be on the lookout for it because, again, what I saw today was very interesting. We actually touched the level, pulled right back. And, again, when I say touch that level, I'll open up like a three-year chart and show you, again, how critical this level happens to be. I mean, for the most part, you start to get above somewhere right around that 4.1, okay? Yeah, 4.5 becomes, you know, in sight in a very, very quick you know, hurry there. All right, moving on from there. You also have to be aware, clearly aware, that earnings are coming, okay? And that is, uh, it's a big one. So if you take a look at Apple, the unstoppable beast to the upside, a little bit of sell side activity today, but come on, it's right in line. Again, Apple is right in line with pretty much the S&Ps. In fact, Apple is outperforming right now NASDAQ. Okay. However, we're all aware that, again, Apple earnings are coming on Thursday afternoon along with Amazon. Right there is a confluence of events. It's a whole lot of market cap coming out at one time. I mean, just a tremendous amount of market cap. Apple obviously is going to be in focus. It releases about 30 minutes after the bell. And of course, we all are aware that Apple's going to say AI as many times as they possibly can in the conference call. The concern I would have around the Apple earnings, okay, it could decimate, right? Even if Apple goes up, it could decimate some of the other stocks that have been heavily involved in AI. I think we're already seeing the sell side in here. Take a look. Microsoft, just so we're all very, very clear about Microsoft, and I'm just going to kind of zoom into this most recent move and display from high to where we presently are, okay, is just Okay, just about a 10% sell-off. I don't think too many people are looking at that. Are you aware, or you are now, that Microsoft is officially in what we term corrective territory? It's about a 10% decline from uh, that reactionary high to where we're presently trading. So what could actually, you know, happen? Well, Apple mentions AI, okay, becomes very, very competitive with Microsoft. Apple mentions AI, it decimates NVIDIA, why would it decimate NVIDIA? Because everybody's thinking they're going to need GPU. They're going to need chips, man. Okay. Yeah. Keep thinking that Apple can build their own, right? So there is this huge, okay, risk to Apple's earnings. Even positive news could in theory be negative to the rest of the tech sector. Okay. That would also, of course, include none other than Meta. And the interesting and ironic thing, if you take a look at Microsoft and Meta, okay, NVIDIA, I'm not the only one that, that sees this. I mean, it's pretty apparent that NVIDIA is getting hammered today. It's down by the tune of almost 5%. That is what I would term statistically significant, but it's NVIDIA. It's Mr. Toad's wild ride out there. Okay, to actually ice the cake a little bit, right, we're also, of course, going to have the jobs number coming out on Friday morning. So, you know, you could have a good Apple earnings announcement, 
The jobs number might be spectacular, but if the jobs number is spectacular, it ultimately means that rates may have to go a little bit higher. Again, do you not see it? That's why I'm calling it this critical confluence of market volatility. It's here. And when I say it's like the next couple of hours, oh, well, hey, look, we'll see where markets are on Thursday morning. But come Thursday like afternoon, it's again, it's going to be Mr. Toad's wild ride right into Friday morning when the jobs number is going to come out. And the jobs number is going to be interesting because the ADP report okay, came out. And remember, jobs is coming out on Friday. Yeah, I know it's Wednesday. Jobs is coming out Friday. But it's all basically coming down to Thursday or Friday of this week. So the ADP report came out today and it was hot, people. People. Hot meaning that the number of jobs created was spectacular inside of the private sector. And uh, yeah, that could be, again, part of the critical confluence over here. As I said, you know, today's volatility is not, you know, a surprise. Look, we're bouncing back up. Of course, we're bouncing back up. I'll come back to that in just a second. Today's volatility is absolutely no surprise. Something was going to light the fuse. That was it. So the Fitch downgrade, you know, lit the fuse. So where to now? All right, last, but definitely not least, you got to be looking at the SPX, the mother of all products. For the SPX, and I want to be very, very clear, so we're going to zoom in. I'm going to write this up over here, okay, so that everybody can see it. The expected move this entire week, so expected move for the week was plus or minus roughly $54. So this $54 expected move. Evidently, we're outside the expected move. Now, I warned everybody. It was the last thing I said, okay, on the evening video. You better be a what? Buyer of short duration options. Your buyer of short duration options this week, you're gold, Jerry, just gold, okay? Because we cracked that expected move, which implies, like, well, you made money. You could have bought a call, bought a put, like, literally, you could have bought a straddle, and you're already up money on that. Because, uh, yeah, it's only Wednesday. Okay, here's the really critical part. The line on the screen right there. And again, I'm going to zoom into it so that everybody can kind of get a feel. That line on your screen right here, okay, it's 4528. That's 4528 in the what? In the SPX. We're exactly 10 handles below it. We're not really off. We haven't, I mean, we're almost reaching back for the lower edge of the expected move to show you, though, how critical. The expected move is we literally came down, touched it, bounced, came through it, touched it, reverted back down, almost touched it again. And here we are. OK, we're flirting right now in the lower edge of the expected move and Thursday and Friday of trade. Big question is, OK, do we really crack this and go for it? That level of forty five twenty eight. OK, isn't just critical. It's everything. Because one of the things that we have seen as of late inside of the SPX, okay, is a pretty consistent, we breached expected move, we breached expected move, we breached expected move, we breached expected move. The last two weeks, okay, we touched outside of it, but the last two weeks, we have absolutely been inside the expected move. Here's a fairly significant breach. One thing that we have learned, okay, over time is that, okay, Considerable numbers of breaches of expected move, okay, cons consecutive weeks lead to more breaches of expected move. So, in effect, you go from these long periods of markets being rather efficient, okay, efficient, for instance, would be right in this neighborhood here. I mean, you literally had months where we didn't breach the expected move at the end of the week, okay, followed by a period of time, all right, where again, it kind of becomes a bit of a wild ride. We believe at this point that we're probably in that wild ride. And normally you just go with the pure probability. Look, there's a 68% chance you should be back inside these lines. That's one standard deviation, except we've already breached. We've already breached, okay? And on top of it, as I said, you got the critical confluence of market volatility. Anything happens in the next couple of days, right? And all of a sudden, market volatility could absolutely erupt. Keep your hands and feet inside of the vehicle the next couple of days. You don't rush to sell premium at the first sign of volatility. Relax a little bit. If you're going to take some directional positions, use spreads. If you're going to sell premium, okay, really wait for it, people. Late Thursday, maybe before the earnings, if this market was getting crushed, maybe wait till Friday, you know, midday. Again, you've got to be restrained in the midst of some volatility. 
Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.